How's it going everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch. Hope you're all having a great week and looking forward to the weekend. I certainly am. And maybe Fury, a game that I'm reviewing today, is one for you guys to consider picking up. Let's get into the review and see what this one's all about. You as the protagonist start locked up, shackled, and the man in the bunny rabbit mask who is freaky and reminds me of Donnie Darko every single time frees you and accompanies you throughout the game, watching your every move. I won't spoil why, but he wants you to succeed by escaping this prison. The story is also very open to interpretation, but I quite liked it and appreciated that the developers had made the effort to implement it here, especially as it's been narrated from the very beginning. Now let's talk about the audio here. The music is utterly brilliant. It is probably one of my favorite soundtracks out of all the indie games I have reviewed on the Nintendo Switch. It's right up there with Neuro Voider and the damn Terminos soundtrack. Here we have electro music, which has been created by Carpenter Brute, Danger, Lawn, Scattle, The Toxic Avenger, Wave Shaper, and Knight. It's a soundtrack that if you're into this type of music, everybody should check out. And I'll put a link um, from Google Music in the description if you want to go and look into that further. The developers Game Bakers have done a superb job here. Now the sound effects from shooting your gun, slashing your sword to the voice acting all the way through is very well done. It's top notch and for me it has terrific sound all round. So in terms of audio the game for me does everything right. In terms of visuals the game brings with it a very stylish anime type style and one that looks great to the eye. The backgrounds when walking from one fight to the next are a gorgeous sci-fi affair. The bosses have been designed by manga artist Takashi Okazaki, designer of Afro Samurai. They are fantastic looking and all look unique. I will say though that I am not sure about the animation when the protagonist is walking. It kind of seems like he's floating but then I would be nitpicking slightly. The dark blues and purple palette set a beautiful tone throughout and the effects used when fighting are nicely detailed without being over the top. Now fortunately, yet again I have to go into this, most of the time this game runs smoothly but a game like this is all about fast reflexes so any slowdown or missed frames can affect your rhythm. It's not a deal breaker here but it is noticeable from time to time and it's the only blight with the performance on this game. Now for those interested in frame rates, this game has no fixed frame rate and moves between 45 and 60 frames per second and is actually the same as the PS4 version. However, when a lot is going on on screen, the frame rates will drop to around 30 frames per second and sometimes, as mentioned, you will encounter dropped frames. It is noticeable here, guys. Now, this is a lot more noticeable when there are lots of bullets on screen or lots of things going on. And I found that this happened both in docked mode and in handheld mode. Now, I did say it's not a deal breaker, but it is something to be aware of. So let's talk about the all-important gameplay. Fury was inspired by Japanese games including Metal Gear Solid, God Hand and No More Heroes and it wanted to give the player a feeling of that adrenaline rush you feel when you're in a fight. Now let me start off by saying that I like this game and I like it a lot. It does combine some of my favourite genres all in one. It's part twin stick shooter, bullet hell and part melee combat fighter using a nice big sword. There are no upgrades here, you can't make your character stronger or anything like that and there is no power ups, this is just straight up fighting. There's no exploration, no secrets to find or anything of the kind. Now if you like games like Dark Souls for example, then just imagine, take away everything but the bosses and you're left with something resembling this game and for many there will not be enough variety from the get go. Now this is a game with a razor sharp focus on fighting bosses and that is where it ends. I will shudder a guess that for everyone who loves this, there's going to be a person that absolutely hates it. There's a thin line between those two emotions, that is for sure. This is one of the hardest games you're going to play on the Switch, of that there's no doubt guys, so I need to make you aware of that straight away. The game makes no apologies. If you don't like hard games, then this is going to be a tough sell for you, but just hang on a minute before you leave. 
There is an easy mode called Promenade, but the game makes it obvious you're playing it in easy by having the words stuck on your health bar, and it even penalises you saying that you will not unlock either speedrun or Furia mode, which is its version of Hardcore. If you complete the game in this mode, the bosses have fewer lives, and there are fewer phases to make it easier, but the fights are over rather quickly. Now, the developers also say that you will not enjoy this as much if you play it on easy, as the feeling of elation will not be the same. And I do agree, but then was there any point having the easy mode in the game in the first place? The game is very difficult, but it's not unbeatable if you persevere. It makes you work hard for it, it makes you learn the skills and timing as well as learning each boss's attack patterns in order for you to have a chance, and only by playing it over and over again will you start to feel that improvement. The skill level's really high here, and you're not going to win by button bashing. The controls feel great and responsive, which they needed to be for a game like this, but you have to learn to attack at the right time. Now this is a boss battle game, there's no enemies to kill in between so there's no filler, which I would have actually have liked to have seen. It reminds me in a way of the game Cuphead and what the developers said about that game when they had created it. It literally only had bosses and they felt that the game needed levels to break up the game boss battles and that was the feedback they also received. So it was delayed until these levels were implemented and I felt that this could have benefited from something similar. I would have liked to have seen levels to sharpen up my skills before each boss battle, although there is a practice mode if you need it. Other than that, you get to play the game in either easy or hard mode, and that's it until you complete it. So for some, it will become repetitive rather quickly. I saw it differently and believe the more I repeated, the better I would become. Now once you reach your first boss, which isn't going to take you long at all, you're thrown right into the deep end. You do get a little tutorial in your first fight, which is essential to understanding the mechanics of the game, but then you're on your own. There are two main parts to each fight, fighting from a distance and close combat, and the fights are broken up into phases. Each phase will be represented by one of the boss's lives. And fighting from a distance is the twin stick shooter part of the game, and the bullet hell part, which I absolutely love. You get to fire your own bullets and charged attacks, while also dodging all incoming bullets using the dodge, which does have a slight delay, so it's all about timing here. In order to initiate close combat, you need to first get the boss's health bar down. A yellow circle will glow around him, showing that the combat can be initiated. You bust out your sword, go toe to toe within a small circle with the boss, and the challenge here comes from how you react to the boss's attacks. The developers call it being warned, reacting, and then punishing. Now here you can parry the boss's attacks, which is fundamental. You get to parry the attack and then unleash a counter attack, which is a bloody fantastic feeling when you get the time right. And you can even get a sweet animation as well, which is cool. Some attacks can't be parried at all and can only be dodged. And you'll know these by the red circle displayed on the floor. And your goal here is to dodge, get into the gap before the boss unleashes an unstoppable attack. You have to work all these patterns out, get it wrong and your health is going to take a serious beating and you'll be on the back foot during the fight. Dodging is another essential tool to evade attacks and strike back and this same dodge can be used in the distance part of the fight to avoid all bullets from your enemy. Now once the boss's health has been taken down in the melee combat section the boss loses a life which is represented by little boxes under his health bar. The fight then rinses and repeats this whole process and with each life he loses the tougher the fight becomes. Different bosses have different amount of lives. The first, for example, uses his first four lives as the tutorial before the fight gets serious. In comparison, you have three lives, and if you lose one, say in melee combat, for example, the boss's health bar resets, and so does yours. And you'll have to get the boss's health bar down again to get him into melee mode, which really is frustrating. There is nothing more frustrating than having the boss on his last live only for you to die. The whole boss fight starts again and these fights can last up to 15 minutes each. It's going to take you a good few goes to beat each one so you can see that the time is going to disappear when playing this game. In melee combat you have the ability to use the same charge attack as in distance combat with your sword which takes a few seconds to charge. If you can get a charge attack in then you can do some serious damage. Everything here is all about timing and having the reflexes of a cat. I found the more I played, the better I became, but it does take perseverance. When you die, you can't blame anyone other than yourself because it's going to be your fault, and I do respect that. The skills are there for you to use in any way you see fit, and the bosses will do their thing over and over again. There's nothing unfair here. The brutal truth is that this game will only be beaten if you're prepared to put in the time and work on getting better.
Much like Dark Souls, which seemed impossible at first, until you persevere through, get better by learning more about your moves and skills and utilizing them to the best effect. Each boss is unique and their style of fighting will present you with different challenges to keep you on edge. An example is in Boss 2, she uses a maze to hide behind so it makes it difficult for you to shoot her. She has a devastating laser attack and has a powerful last phase. So talking about value, the game here is £17.99 or $19.99 and this game is full of polish. It's one of those indie games which really has a lot going for it. It's not often that you see an indie game like this display such confidence in what it aims to achieve and to do so with such style and aplomb. The game has 10 bosses to fight and while that doesn't sound like a lot on paper, they'll take you a long while to beat in hard mode which is how the developers want you to play this game. There is an easy mode which is cool to appease the more casual player but it's true that it doesn't give you that same satisfaction. The replayability then comes from unlocking speedrun and the furia mode. Now some people will beat this and probably not come back to it and others will spend hours sharpening their skills so it really depends on what type of gamer you are. I can't tell you that but what I can say is if you do buy this and want something which is quite unique on this platform then there is plenty of value to extract from this game by continually trying to improve your fighting skills. There's no doubt that this game is niche, it will only appeal to a certain crowd possibly and some will just find it just too difficult. In summary then, I had no idea what to expect from Fury other than the fact I heard it was hard. That certainly does not put me off a game like this. What I wasn't expecting from it though was the level of polish it had, the story it was trying to tell, stunning soundtrack, beautiful visuals and boss designs and how unique it felt mixing up some of my favourite genres all in one game. The game does have some frame rate issues which is a shame but not enough of a problem to ruin the experience. The gameplay is fun and solid and it's a game which will present you with a mighty stiff challenge which is always fair and while difficult not impossible. Bear in mind that you will have to really work at it to complete it and it will become repetitive for some. Some of you may find it too much of a challenge but for those that just love those types of boss battles there's a lot to recommend here. A 7.5 then out of 10 from me. I really hope you enjoyed this slightly longer than usual review but there was a lot to talk about. If you enjoyed it please hit that thumbs up it really means a lot to us and if you're a new watcher here then why not consider subscribing for more reviews like this one. For all of you that continue to support us Thank you so much, we really appreciate your time. And if you want to check out the written review, head over to www.switchwatch.co.uk. My name is Juan Romero from Switchwatch, and I'll see you on the next one.